Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content today is I'm going to show you how the gun controllers over at Everytown for Gun Safety are losing their minds in light of the ghost gun case getting another smoke, sh a smoke show issued against it. This is going to be something you guys are going to want to see. Everything will be linked in the description box below. And please send this one out. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on because anytime that I can show you great news about a ghost gun rule getting invalidated yet again and also the reaction from the gun controlling left which is outside the realm of normalcy it's a great day okay let's get into this beautiful people because it's Friday and you deserve to smile so for the first thing I'm going to show you FPC and FPCAF win. Fifth Circuit vacates ATF's unlawful frame or receiver rule. Now that broke last night, and that's excellent news. Let me show you what they have done. Let me show you what Everytown actually was driven to make a press release on this. This <laughs> is you guys are going to enjoy this greatly. So, November 9th, 2023, the Firearms Policy Coalition and FPAC announced that the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled in their favor, holding that portions of ATS frame or receiver rule are unlawful in Vanderstock v. Garland. And that's something that we've been covering a lot. Unlawful. Well, that's not good if you're the ATF. So let me show you some of the quotes here from this ruling. Quote, the agency rule at issue here flouts clear statutory text and exceeds the legislatively imposed limits on agency authority in the name of public policy, wrote Inglecourt for the court. Because Congress has neither authorized the expansion of firearm regulation nor permitted the criminalization of previous lawful conduct, the proposed rule constitutes unlawful action. It's going back to exactly what we said the whole time. Congress did not authorize you to change the law ad hoc because you wanted to from the executive branch. You can't do that. Again, that's the first one. It's all about the way that they did it. Let me show you something else. Quote, unless and until Congress acts to expand or alter the language of the Gun Control Act, ATF must operate within the statutory text existing limits. The final rule impermissibly exceeds those limits such that ATF has essentially rewritten the law. Are you catching a theme here? They stepped outside of their bounds. Congress gets to write laws. The executive branch is trying to write laws for Congress. That's a violation of the separation of powers. Let's get it. What else would you like to talk about? You're starting to see this theme a whole lot with a lot of these court cases. Pistol brace rules. Nope. Ghost gun rules. Nope. They're doing the same thing because it's all built on the same thing. Hey, knock, knock. Bump stock laws. Nope. Or bump stock rules. Nope. All right. Got one more thing for you. Then I'm going to show you the coping and seething happening over at every town in this press release, which was released today. Quote, this is yet another massive victory against the ATF and a huge blow to the Biden administration's gun control agenda, said Cody J. Wisniewski, FPCA's general counsel and Le vice president of legal and counsel for plaintiffs. ATF has no authority to make law, and the Biden administration cannot circumvent Congress and the rights of the people through federal agency rulemakings, a point the Fifth Circuit just reiterated. We look forward to defending this win and to continue to deliver additional victories to the people in the future. It's all about Congress being usurped from the executive branch. That's all it's been the whole time. However, let me show you how the Every Town for Gun Safety press release is coping and seething, and they go in a very different direction. Look at this. And this is how you know you're winning because you're pushing them to this level. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals doubles down on its extreme but futile decision to invalidate ATF's life-saving ghost gun rule. Every town responds, 11:10. So this morning, this got this got them all all their panties all in a wad. Let me show you these two quotes from this release. It's a pretty long release, by the way. New York. Yesterday, in another dangerous and misguided decision from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, the court once again issued a decision that, were it not for the Supreme Court's prior interventions, would strike down portions of the Biden administration's life-saving ghost gun rule. The Fifth Circuit's decision comes after the U.S. SCOTUS twice reversed the Fifth Circuit's decisions that would have struck down and undermined the rule. While yesterday's decision puts the ATF's life-saving rule in peril once more, the rule will remain in effect at least until the Supreme Court decides whether to hear the case. Um, tell me you're terrified without telling me you're terrified. The entire point in the ruling from this district or from the uh, court was quite literally, you can't go outside of congressional law. If you want to do this, pass it through Congress. The gun controllers don't want to do that because they can't get it through Congress. So they're using the executive bureaucracies. And now they're writing letters to support the fact that they can't get it out of their, uh, through Congress and their executive bureaucracies are under attack because it's unconstitutional. 
Got one more for you. Man, watching these people squirm is amazing. In recent years, this is where they talk about the Fifth Circuit. You know, ignore the Seventh Circuit, ignore the Ninth Circuit, ignore the Second Circuit, all those. No, no, that's normal. This is, a, this is an ad, uh, abnormality. In recent years, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has made it a habit to issue extreme and dangerous decisions concerning gun safety. The Supreme Court has already agreed to hear two critical cases stemming from extreme decisions from the Fifth Circuit. The Rahimi case, where the Fifth Circuit struck down, you know about that, and the Cargill case, which is the bump stock ban. Funny how you brought that up, because that's going to be accepted. And the point is, it's all going to the SCOTUS. That's why they uh, they keep going down this road of the Fifth Circuit's evil. Ninth Circuit, completely insane, off the rocker, but that's normal because they're on my side. Fifth Circuit, they're against me, therefore they're extreme and dangerous and insane. You understand what they're doing here. They are terrified that if any of these pushes that they've kept on doing, that the Fifth Circuit keeps ruling unconstitutional, it's going to push it in front of SCOTUS. They are attacking the Fifth Circuit because they know if the Fifth Circuit keeps on doing that, it goes to the SCOTUS. They have their gun control points on the chopping block, and they don't want that. They want it to be stuck in the court systems with no final determination. It ain't happening that way, which is why gun rights groups are putting everything in the Fifth Circuit because it's going to get it to the SCOTUS. It's all about getting the road to the SCOTUS to undermine this and destroy this for once and for all, not this hodgepodge of it's okay over here, it's not okay over here. They're terrified. And that's why I'm bringing this to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Brayden. See you later.